The history of jazz was written on the road, in small clubs in towns big and small, by musicians whose names are now legendary for even the uninitiated. Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Max Roach, and Frank Downbeat Brown. The last name on that list may not be the best known, but aside from playing drums with some of these greats, Frank Brown is the man who took these amazing candid photos. Hundreds of them, in fact. His son, Frank Brown Jr., is our audio engineer. Did your dad ever talk to you about these? I knew he had them, and I knew he, there, was a, there was a lot of uh, pictures that he had taken because photography was a, just a passion of his, yeah. where music was also, I mean, his first love and his passion, but uh, photography was just a side uh, love, and he loved to capture things um, in, in, in because he, for some reason, knew that these things would be worth something and if nothing more than great memories. Like these photos of the writer James Baldwin, known to Frank Jr. as Uncle Jimmy. That picture right there is a picture of Uncle Jimmy and my dad. Er, um, earlier, my dad was in Blues for Mr. Charlie, the stage play that James Baldwin uh, did, and my father played. He had a small part. He was a DJ. Right. So um, this is your dad. That's my dad. And Uncle Jimmy right and there. And Uncle Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Did you know when you had interactions with him that this was an internationally known uh, writer? It's just what he did. It's just it, he was a, just a down to earth person, but very fun. Um, but he had an aura about him even then. Even as a young kid, I it, it felt he felt different than. Uh, Uncle David, his brother, who was a real prankster and jokester, right. you know, he he would he was real, but there was something about him. There was definitely something about him. Now, what do you know about these photographs? Those photographs. See, the big thing in Harlem back in those days was you went to church on Sunday, and the party started on Sunday afternoon, and all the clubs in Harlem. Um, the, large, the larger clubs, even smaller clubs, they would have these jam sessions. You went to these jam sessions if you were a musician. You went to these jam sessions if you just wanted to sit around, have a drink or two yeah. or four or five. And you networked. This was the musician's networking situation. There was no internet, of course. The band leaders would go and find uh, cats to, to, to play in their band if they would get ready to go on the road. And they'd pick. Now, these are some Latin guys here. Oh, yeah. Tito Puente, Machito, they're all in here. Graciela. Art Blakey. Art Blakey. Oh, my goodness. There's birds in here. Yeah, he is. Charlie Parker, the George Washington of bebop, captured in noirish black and white and preserved in photo books, slightly weathered, but luckily here for us to share. You must know the significance of these photos, right? Yeah, I mean, oh, absolutely. It's not like this is some guys who picked up the... the instruments on the weekends and went out. These no, are, these weren't weekend warriors. This, yeah. this is what they did. This is how they made their living. This is Parker at the height of his powers. So here's Dizzy Gillespie, young Dizzy Gillespie, 1951 at the 845 Club in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. You want to take a picture of a people in a time, you want to call it black history because almost everybody here is black, but this is American History. American history, sure. We need to go to WBGO. Okay. Uh, and show some of these to Dorthon Kirk. Dorthon Kirk? Yes. Frank Brown. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Welcome. Oh, we are at the you. Mecca thank of you. Jazz. We yes. are. Yes. We Come are. on, let's go inside. I want to show right. you some stuff. Dorthon Kirk is the manager of community relations and special events at WBGO, our neighbors in Newark, the only 24 hour jazz station in the New York metropolitan region. Kirk is the widow of famed jazz man Rassan Roland Kirk. We went to her for some context. That looks like it could have been Billie Holiday, but it's not. It's a white lady, but it's still. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dizzy Gillespie, 840. Oh, that's in the Bronx, March 1951. Dizzy Gillespie. I knew Joe. Is that Joe Carroll? Mm -hmm. Oh, Carroll, the vocalist? Yes. Joe and Alma, they lived in Brooklyn. We had Joe Carroll right out here in Military Park when WBGO first started. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. 51. I was a mere baby then. Art Blakey. Art Blakey. When we used to do Jazz Fridays yes. in Newark. Yep. 
Art Blakey, Terrace Ballroom. I have a story Gary will verify, oh but God. we can't I, I, tell I, I, it. We we can't tell know, that I story. Know. 110th Street, New York City, 1952. Good grief. These are just absolutely classic. Wow. Jazz came out of blues and, and, and gospel and all, it, it, the whole thing is just connected. Yeah. It's just it's just and this music as you can see, is lasting. Yeah. It sounds just as good today as it did when I was in a when I was a teenager. That was a couple of years ago. Yes, one or two. These are absolutely invaluable. This would make a great exhibit at BGO. Yeah, the world does need to see these photos. Their record of a life in art, on the road, creating the music that would change music forever. Or for Frank Brown Jr., dad's family photos that just happen to feature the founders of America's greatest artistic gift to the world. For NJTV News, I'm David Cruz.